Hello people, today is my first video, and today I am going to be showing you guys a game called Flyout. If you're an aviation fan like me, this game is a must-have. If you've played Simple Planes or Kerbal Space Program, it is very similar to that, but in my opinion has a much more refined design system. You can go from making small personal jets to the wildest fighters you could ever imagine. Now I'm going to show you how today. Hello everyone and welcome back to a rather unique video. As some of you may know, this was my first video on YouTube. Back when I released that video I just showed on the intro, maybe 800 people knew that Flyout even existed. At least that's the amount of people in the Flyout Discord server, there were probably a few more from YouTube. On the day I write this number down for my memory, that number has breached 18,000 members. That's over 17,000 people that have seen the game and joined the Flyout Discord server since my first video. That is genuinely insane. And I am proudly the reason at least a good amount of those people joined. And I think that's a fact worth celebrating. So today, as we all patiently await Flyout's public release, I decided that I am going to rebuild my first craft ever in Flyout. Well, not my first craft ever, technically. It's actually my third craft ever, but it was my first YouTube craft. That being said, my first two aircraft were a lot better. I don't have too many pictures of them, but my first craft was a flying wing, and my second craft was this maneuverability demonstrator jet fighter. Both, in my opinion, rather ambitious first projects, but I was relatively happy with how they turned out. My first YouTube project, however, was this horrible little trainer aircraft that didn't quite do anything right. I'll explain more about it later, but essentially it's because I tried to build and script it live instead of doing a time lapse. This gave me just about zero time to work on it, and just about zero time to think about it, and it turned out pretty horrible as a result. But for the occasion of this video, you can find my first video public on YouTube. It'll be public for a few days, but if you missed that, you can find the unlisted version up here on the top left by the little info icon, or top right, I still never bothered to figure it out. And in case you missed that or I forget to put it up for some reason, it'll also be unlisted in the description of this video. And honestly, it's kind of a super embarrassing video for me, but I figure if any occasion is the occasion to show it, it's this one. And it does a pretty fantastic job of showing improvement, which is ultimately what this video is about today. Improvement. So my original plan was supposed to be a single engine trainer aircraft for jet training, but as it turned out, that design was pretty horrible. It didn't even have two seats for God's sakes, it had poor engine placement, it had wings that were far too wide, it was just awful and ugly and stupid. Back then I had like four subscribers and I didn't bother to ask for help from the flyout community for my builds. Back then, when I posted the video, I was super flattered to see that Hot Dog, or more commonly known as the Community Manager of Flyout, had put my video in the server's guide channel, and because of that, I am the proud owner of Flyout's first ever narrated build video, even if it is kind of bad. I think upon release, it maybe got like 20 views in the first, like, few days, and I was like, oh yeah, this one's doing numbers, a whole four likes, awesome. But obviously, it would take a lot more than that to get people interested in Flyout. And you know what? Look at me and my channel today. With over 30,000 subs and thousands of other people interested in the game, I think we're doing pretty good for ourselves. And you know what? I even have Hot Dog or the community manager potentially doing some voice acting for a secondary trailer I'm making. I went from super flattered and nervous to even being able to call him my friend. And I reckon that we've all come a long way since that first video. Hot dog, if you're watching this, best of luck on your FIA test. Hope it all goes well. But anyways, carrying on with the video, I wanted to keep some design features from my first plane, obviously. This isn't just some random plane that I'm making to compare, it's actually supposed to be relatively similar. We may have grown, but that doesn't mean I'm just gonna make a different plane. If we take a close look at my first aircraft, it was a single engine trainer jet where I attempted to model a Lurx and a tail boom using the vertex editor and included a single vertical stabilizer as well as these unique high angle trailing edges near the wing route that I also planned on including in this design. So that was our shopping list. We needed to make a single engine trainer with a Lurx and a tail boom with a single vertical stab and a high reverse sweep angle trailing edge at the root of the wing, blending into a normal high aspect ratio wing further from the root. Obviously as it's a trainer aircraft it's going to actually include two seats this time, 
and of course actually working intakes. On my first build, I forgot to actually model the intakes. Actually, that's something we should mention while we're here. This aircraft features a boxier intake similar to the ones featured on the T7, for example. They also have a boundary layer diffuser in order to not suck in any of that turbulent, bumpy, dirty air into the intake. They're also placed far enough back where any external vortices from the lurks would go down the wing route instead of going into the intake, hopefully leading to no compressor stalls during negative G maneuvers. <clears throat> Flanker. And of course, it also meant full intake ducting all the way to the engine, which looked far better than anything I've been doing for a while now, ever since my most recent builds. Compare that to my first build with literally no intakes and all the garbage problems it had. Now ultimately, this design for my first aircraft isn't a terrible choice by any means. I mean, think about it, the Lurks gives me plenty of vortex lift at moderate AOA. The tail booms also providing extra lift via lifting body at just about any speed. The high aspect ratio wings also allow for the aircraft to perform more like a normal aircraft at low AOA, utilizing both vortex lift from the dogtooth and lurks, and traditional lift at just about any speed and angle. The problem was my execution was rather horrid, lacking intakes, a well-designed engine, or properly designed lurks or tail boom, or even a second seat. So we plan on fixing that all today. We also plan on this jet trainer to be based on our previous build, as so we have a way to introduce new pilots to the Basilisk. So we're not only going to include all the features mentioned above, but we're also going to want to improve a relatively similar subsonic flight performance to the LF-19. With all that out of the way, let's go and talk about how I improved this design. The first thing I designed, of course, was the positioning of the pilots and the main fuselage of the aircraft. Since the aircraft needed two pilots with good visibility, I made sure to elevate the instructor's seat so he could get an even better view and be capable of flying the plane on his own. Behind this, it was the engine and the tail boom. The engine was going to be instead of a high bypass turbofan, an afterburning low bypass turbofan to simulate a more advanced flight training you might expect out of aircraft such as the T7, for example. As for the aerodynamics, this aircraft would feature a large leading edge extension, tail booms, and wings with actuating slats. This would allow us to get a good aerodynamic performance at just about any speed, as well as relatively close flight performance to the LF-19. The tail booms and canopy would also feature custom air brakes and canopy openings in order to fit both pilots. The air brakes as well were relatively large, and they were pretty capable of slowing down the aircraft relatively quickly. Obviously, this aircraft would have an emphasis on relative efficiency and ease of maintenance and low flight costs as it was specifically designed to train people. Because of this, the engine was fairly low temp and barely able to actually push the aircraft over Mach. But considering the afterburner wouldn't need to be used under 90% of scenarios, the mill power cruising speed of about 0.85 would probably be the maximum this aircraft hits for the majority of its lifetime. As for the cockpit, I reused one or two panels from the LF-19, but it was otherwise entirely original. Things like the fuel caps and push rods, which would otherwise be hidden, were instead exposed on the exterior of the aircraft in order to optimize repair times and overall ease of maintenance. Everything was basically paneled to keep it this way. The cockpit had a similar flow direction and relative simplicity in mind, as to not overcrowd and confuse the new pilots that would be flying it. There were buttons for the radio and all basic flight systems in the aircraft, as well as a practice mode with three separate channels for any scenarios. A master arm was included with a practice mode where pilots could simulate combat missions with two wing pylons, which could fit either practice bombs or practice air-to-air -air weaponry. A larger pylon was included center line with fuselage as well, which was capable of carrying a drop tank or a cargo hold for the pilot and instructor's stuff. The landing gear once again had advanced actuation that was handily copied over from my LF-19, of which I'll probably use in just about every build from now on. I have now just about learned to make them myself and do some other funky things, so watch out for that in the future. A custom landing light panel was also added to the bottom of the fuselage that pops out with the gear in order to maintain aerodynamics in flight. Two MFDs were also included in the cockpit of the aircraft, so as the pilot could view different things such as their practice channel and IFF, as well as GPS and navigation info. Lights, gear, and other basic function panels were also included in the cockpit. The instructor seat also included just about all the same buttons, as ultimately his goal was to teach the newbie how to fly jet fighters. 
Lastly, but certainly not least, a flight control system was added to the aircraft to give decent stability as well as a G slash alpha limiter in order to keep the new pilot from accidentally stalling or overstressing the airframe. Besides in basic flight tests for stalling the aircraft in which the flight limiters can be disabled. So with our leading edge extensions, tail booms, antennae, and flight telemetry equipment, a new snazzy paint job, a trainer-oriented interior, fancy air brakes, canopies, and landing lights, and gear, as well as the high aspect wings and dog tooth tailorons, we had just about everything complete. It was time to fly. Hello everyone, I originally wasn't going to do one of these uh, um, post-montage flights, but um, there are a few things I want to show you on this plane because I was just too excited not to. So first things first, and I think my favorite part is definitely the beacon lights on the bottom and top of the aircraft. The one on the top of the aircraft kind of reminds me of like, like a Cessna or something. But anyways, okay, so we're in the air now. Um, look at the little landing lights. It's got its own little flap in the front that just closes up when the gear come up. Which I think is a super cool. Uh, I don't know why I find that so cool. It's also got custom fuel caps on the wings. Which I also think is super cool. But, um... You know, relatively low maintenance plane, or um, plane designed with maintenance in mind is ultimately what this thing was supposed to be. So there's a lot of, um, it's not very like clean looking per se compared to the other one, but um, that's completely all right. It's not exactly supposed to be, you know, you've got your external fuel caps and your your hard points and your beacon lights and all that crap and it's in, in your antennae. It's all supposed to be exposed anyways. Also, the air brakes look really cool. Hold on, I gotta show you guys these two. Look, look at them. That's so cool. It's got the little um, arm that they come out on for actuating. But this is the most, or at least my favorite part of the plane is the wing flex. If you guys take, here we'll go into fix cam. You guys should have seen it in the montage, but uh, I'm gonna show you guys it anyways. Look, look at the wing flex. I find it so cool, and actually these wings could even break if you want them to, so the fly-by-wire prevents you from doing it, it can only pull 9 G's, but um, if I turn it off here, okay, uh, G limiter is now disabled, I can just, uh, there they go, <laughs> only after pulling a casual, oh, I hit 22 G's before they came off there, so, uh, maybe a little bit too strong, but, uh, I'll take it. And it still flies as well. It actually flies surprisingly well. Like at about 400 knots, you can get a sustained turn rate in this configuration of like 15, 14 degrees a second. Which isn't great by any means, but it's absolutely ridiculous for a plane with no wings. Man, I guess that's just the power of, uh, of Lurxus, huh? Well, um... 
unfortunately, this thing isn't exactly, you know, pleasant to fly anymore. I mean, it is, actually, surprisingly easy to fly still. But I'm just going to return it home. Do a nice little no-winged landing to show you guys. You know what? This is to show you guys an emergency situation without wings. To prepare you guys for training in this aircraft. Because I'm sure you totally will fly this thing when the game comes out. Right, guys? Right? Ah, maybe not. Alright, gear down. Lose all that speed. Those air brakes do wonders for that. Huh? I mean, I get it. That was a really hard landing. Because I, I, was, I was focusing more on what my mic was doing than what the plane was doing. Making sure my audio isn't crapping the bed here because it almost did but still that wh why did it bounce eh you know what whatever i think that's enough for this video i hope you guys enjoy i'll see you in the next one goodbye